Hello. I'm here. I'm here for NXT. Where are my notes? Just a second. So for everyone who is wondering, whenever I'm looking this way, I'm looking at my notes. So without embarrassing myself more, let's just jump into it. First match of the night was for the NXT Heritage Cup, Akira Tozawa versus Noam Dar. And of course, we all knew that Noam Dar is gonna win, but I hope that match elevated Akira Tozawa in a way. I just want to see Akira Tozawa improve and improve and improve, and I kinda see that happening in the Alpha Academy. Even though Alpha Academy is in the mid card, Akira Tozawa was less than a mid card, so he's making his way to the top, I would assume. But anyway, he lost the match, and after the match we had a backstage segment where the Alpha Academy met the group of Drew Gulak, and basically we're gonna have a match between Otis and Drew Gulak later tonight. It's actually not tonight, it was yesterday night, but you get the point. After that, Iron Survivor Challenge Qualifier match from Mick Foley. The first match from Mick Foley was between Fallon Henley and Tiffany Stratton. I'm not a fan of Tiffany Stratton, but she won. Somehow she won, I don't know. She made two attempts for the prettiest moonsault or whatever her finisher is called and on the second one she landed it and she won. Uh, I wouldn't say it was underwhelming finish or it was something spectacular. I would say even that it was expected finish. So yeah, Tiffany Stratton is the first qualified contender for the Iron Survivor Challenge on deadline. After that, the 100th incarnation of that match, Braun Breaker versus Von Wagner. I remember months ago I was saying that I'm so hyped about that match. But right now, when I see how things are booked around, I'm kind of disappointed. I'm kind of disappointed that after all this time, we have a kayfabe injury of Von Wagner, he, his head is split in half and all of that stuff, and he makes a gorgeous return, and every, every, everyone is like, oh, does he do it? And in the end, he lost. Yeah, in the end, he put Braun through a table, but was that all worth it for a loss? I don't know, I don't know how all these things work, but at least I hope this one finishes everything between Braun and Vaughn. And I don't know what the future holds for both of them, so we're gonna wait for next week to see what's gonna happen, I assume. Another match that was started backstage, Electra Lopez and Lola Vice versus Roxanne Perez and Kelani Jordan. Basically, Electra Lopez and Lola Vice were bragging that they're the winners of the breakout tournament. And after that, Roxanne Perez was like, don't make enemies in the locker room because you're gonna feel bad about this. And yeah, they have a match. And of course, I don't remember who won because I hate when this happens, you know? Every time, I swear, I have watched the event, but anyway, uh, let me check, let me check. Okay, Roxanne Perez and Kelani Jordan won, which means absolutely nothing. Or in other words, it means that Roxanne Perez was right I don't know, what does that mean? After that, the match that I mentioned earlier, Drew Gulag versus Otis, it was a really nice match. Otis won, of course, but I don't understand why we are shoving Drew Gulag in the ground. I'm not a fan of Drew Gulag, but he, from Raw, he went to NXT and he started a losing streak. After that, he started teaming up with Charlie Dempsey and with Damon Kemp and with that new guy and he keeps on losing and I don't know why they don't figure something out even some schmack finisher, I don't know just to make Drew Gulak win and put his group over because Alpha Academy is already on Raw and they have things thing to do, you know? but Drew Gulak, he, he needs to go back to Raw he needs to go to that main roster with that whole group of people that are really cool because Charlie Dempsey is Regal's son 
and Damon Camp has a lot of potential as well. And that new guy has looks, but he cannot speak for flip's sake. And but give them a chance, you know, give them a chance. After that, Dijak versus Tyler Bate. What we were expecting? What were you expecting, Mick Foley? Why did you do that match? A giant versus a small guy. What did you expect? A small guy to pull a miracle every week? Because that's what's happening on NXT. Usually, the small guy pulls somehow a victory. But honestly, I'm super happy for Dijak because he was also on a losing streak for the longest time. And I'm not sure if he's gonna win the Iron Survivor Qualifier Challenge thingy. But at least he qualified, which is a little bit of a W itself. Last but not least, the main event. The main event was not a match, everyone, which is a little bit of an L. But I was happy with it because for the longest time, everyone was asking the question, did Carmelo Hayes attack Trick Williams? And we were about to get the answer, but Lexus King came out and I like this. I loved it because it was not only Trick and Melo, but Lexus King is involved. Maybe Lexus King attacked Trick Williams. Maybe Lexus King ordered someone to attack Trick Williams. Maybe Carmelo Hayes ordered Lexus King to attack Trick Williams, but there is something going on there and Trick Williams accidentally attacked Melo in his attempt to attack Lexus King which a little bit breaks the relationship, but I'm really excited for next week to understand what is happening with Trick and Mellow Gang. So much emotion going into that storyline. I cannot wait for these two to battle. And most importantly, I cannot wait for these two, as I said a thousand times, to join the Herd Business or the Street Profits, whatever you want to call them, and make a huge stable and make that stable fight either the Bloodline or the Judgment Day or some relevant group and all of that stuff. So with that being said, if I was rating NXT tonight, I would give it a solid 7.4 out of 10. It was a good show. It was not a bad show. I don't know what else I can tell you. We had two matches for the Iron Survivor Challenge. We had amazing main event. Yeah, it was not a match, but still the impromptu matches made sense. And the opening match was the NXT Heritage Cup match, which is a format of a match that I really enjoy watching and conceptually I like. It. So that's it, boys and girls. Why are you still here? Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to see you tomorrow for Bang Dynamite. Peace.